This lecture is going to cover some of the basics of longboard design. And I figured that since the best way to teach it is to show examples, I'm just going to do a screen cam lecture. So let's get started. A longboard in my class is just a, a 40 by 10 a set of boards glued together, four or five layers. Now this one actually is four layers, so it's difficult to see. You can see the layers, but not where they're glued together. Now we take these layers and glue them face to face, but we want to put some kind of image on the faces. Now, if you want to do a blank board, this is an example of a short penny board that was made. Uh, the wheels were never put on because he had them at home, but he simply glues them together, and this is fast. You can have your board very quickly doing it this way as just a blank. There's nothing on it, no images, no designs. Now, you can do a blank and then color it somehow. This one was colored white, and he took some black paint and just kind of let it drip, and that was kind of the idea, the image that he went for. He did cut out a nice shape. And again, he put the wheels on at home. So here's another example. While the board is much more intricate, it's a, it's a drop deck, you can tell. Uh, the image is simply just put on with masking tape. He masked it off and used spray paint to get uh, the colors there. So if you're going to use veneer, veneering is simply a thin layer of wood. This is only a sixteenth of an inch thick. I, I kind of have a close-up shop here. But uh, the veneers are three different colors. Now, as you can see, I got them wet, and when you get them wet with water or lacquer, and that's what they'll look like when they're lacquered, they darken a little bit. Now, the white stays fairly white, and I have red, and I have black. So respectively, this is maple, cherry, and walnut. So those are the three that we generally use. I don't typically buy any other colors because they do fine. But what we have to do is put some veneers together and cut them. Now, Here's the problem. It, the veneer starts as a 10 by 40 sheet and we cut everything out of it so that it goes on your board. But the problem is this 40 inch sheet does not fit in my laser engraver. In fact, the engraver only fits boards that are 24 inches or less uh, long in length. So somehow we need to cut this to make it fit. So he, I'm, what I'm gonna do is give you two methods to solve that problem. You choose whichever one you like. They both work just fine. I'm going to give you the pros and cons of both. Now, before we officially get started, if you're going to be using veneer, one thing I need to make sure you understand is you need to cut out an image twice. Now, this happens to be my son's board. He came in to do a long board on his own and wanted a nice skull. And that's great. We found one. We traced it into vectors. And then we had to cut it twice. Here's the opposite image. So we cut one out of black cut one out of white, and then essentially you swap the colors. So while uh, ultimately he didn't use this one on his board, somebody else could have. So if you're working with somebody else and you make the same image, that's great. You can use it. It saves time for both of you and some material. However, no matter what, whether somebody else is using it or not, you need to cut it out twice. And I think we just ended up throwing this away simply because we didn't use it. We didn't need it. Now here is the board he made. This, this is the bottom side at least. His last name's Ellison, just like me. And I wanted, this shows a couple different things. First of all, image placement. Uh, he cut off the interesting part, the teeth, the very intricate parts. He put it too close to the end. So make sure when you're getting images, first of all, they're not so big that they extend off the end, but also that they're in a place that's actually going to be seen. Somehow he should have backed this up a little bit. But the other thing I wanted to show was the transition. The 40 inch board can't fit, so he took the veneer and cut right here. And that cut, while he did line up his pieces pretty well, the grain lines look good, they're not great, they're not perfect. You can always see the line. So while that kind of transition does work, it's difficult to make it look good. That line will always be there. Now, this is an example of somebody that took a lot more time. The cut is about here, and it's really hard to see. He did a very good job of keeping his grain lines lined up and very, making it a tight joint so that you can't see it. This, another one, the same student, the line's about right here. So while it's not dead center, he transitioned so that he could get that cut and then get the hearts cut out. So these, this is a more common method for, uh, for that problem. We simply take the center part and cut it down to 24 inches so it fits in the machine. Then we put that part in the machine and cut out your image. 
and he just swapped all the pieces and then he took uh, darker pieces and put them in on the end. Now the reason he did that is simply the transition is there and it's easy to see, but with a different color, it looks like it was meant to be that way. It's supposed to be there, it's a different color, of course it's gonna stand out. I find that if you can't hide it, then make it stand out. Can't hide the transition, make it stand out better so that it looks like it was meant to be that way. Same process, cut the center, then cut out the middle and made those part, the swap for all those parts and then put in two different colors for the same transition. Same thing, he has more colors that makes it stand out better but the transitions are all the same. This is another example where he didn't actually have to cut it twice. On this board, he cut the center out at 24 inches, then cut out the BYU logo shape, and then just took the pieces and colored some of them blue and put the same ones back in. Now, the reason it's a bit faded is that he sanded it off, whereas he didn't sand the ends. So that's something you need to watch out for. And this one does work and it looks good. It's just a little bit more faded than I think he wanted. Now, not all your transitions have to be completely straight. Now, here's a straight transition here. That was cut on a saw. So was this one. This was cut on a chop saw and he cut the angle and then cut this out on the laser engraver to fit that angle. Now, that's tricky to fit this angle, but it can be done. And then he just pieced all together. Once this cut was made and this one, everything else fit in the laser engraver so it could be lasered out and not have to be cut out by hand. Here's another example of how the transition doesn't need to be um, straight. He did waves. And if you look at the other side, which we'll get to in, in a later picture, he has waves all the way up and down. But he cut the middle out of 24, then cut the waves on each end, and then cut out his image in the middle, and then pieced in cut the wave the same shape on these two ends and just piece them all together. So your transitions don't have to be straight if you don't want them to be. Here's more of an extreme example. This was a board that I made as a demonstration piece. You can see I used my son's skull image, which I really liked when we put that together. But instead of a straight transition, I used a flame. Now, where did I get that? Well, down here in this file menu, I'll just scroll down a little bit and find it. These are a bunch of different images, and you may even recognize some of them from the pictures I'm using. There they are. I found this flame. I took it, got rid of the watermark, traced it, and made a vector out of it so that it could be cut. And that's what I used. And then I put that on and cut it twice as I was doing this. That's the exact flame image. Now, doing that looks better, but it does add a little bit more math. I now had to go from the tip to down here for my measurement. So from the tip of this flame, to the tip of that is 24 inches. You just gotta take that into account that you're losing some uh, when you overlap them. But the transition is much more interesting as it was meant to be there. It's not just straight, it's not just angled. There's something there. And you can use a whole bunch of different styles of transitions. You just have to find a line that can be cut. Same thing, this board was made by a student much later. He liked my flame transition, so obviously he used that. And then he simply cut out the image in the center, the logo for our school. And the other side, that's the other side of that same board, he has straight transitions, but the middle, uh, our mascot is a caveman, so he went and found a uh, mouth of a cave image. You can see the stalactites and stalagmites, and he used that as his transition, and then cut the head of a caveman out in the center for the logo. It turned out very well. If you're interested in a different look, the other method for solving the problem of fitting in the laser engraver has to do with geometric shapes. Now in this case, that's all it is. Uh, he cut out a whole bunch of diamonds or parallelograms and taped them all together until it fit his board and then we glued it up. Here's another of the same type of um, idea. He did diamonds of different colors and put them together. It's very striking, very attractive. Uh, here's another one, bigger diamonds, but the same idea. Just piece them all together until they fit his board. Now this is the other side, the one that had the octopus in the middle, the waves. In this one, he simply traced it, he, he uh, drew it on the Corel draw, and then copied and pasted it a whole bunch of times on the image, and then cut them out. And he put two together here and here for some interest, but that's all you have to do. It's just copy and pasting that, that image. Here's another idea. He just made long rectangles. This is called a herringbone uh, design. And he just pieced those rectangles together, taped them together in the image that he wanted until he had enough, and we glued it up. 
Now, with the second method, now we're officially getting into that method. Like I said, it had to do with geometric shapes. Now, this student, whose name is Aaron, uh, he put together a whole bunch of diamonds. And he put enough together so that the edge of the diamonds here and the bottom edge here are 24 inches, so it fit into the laser engraver. And he taped them all together. You can see the green tape here. That's how we tape it together on the back. And then he cut out his design, his name. And he did that with two other colors, two alternating colors, and swapped those out. Once that's all taped together as one unit, then he put it together and taped on the remaining pieces on the end so that it covered his board. And this is how it ended up. He cut out the shape and got it all sanded down. And it looked very good. Same idea here, the herringbone shape. Uh, unfortunately, the, the parts he cut weren't quite long enough for this design of board, so he just pieced in some cherry there so it fit. But he put together this end down to about here so that it was small enough to fit into the laser engraver, but big enough for the soccer ball that he put on in the middle. Same example, he put together diamonds. He went to about here and here so it fit in the laser engraver and cut out the name, Cody, C-O-D-Y and then just pieced in the rest of it later so that he could cover his board. I only throw this one in as an example. He used method one, so there's a transition in here somewhere, but the pieces he cut out is all one piece, but he painted them as he put them together. So these pieces weren't here. He took spray paint and painted this, and then painted some pieces white and black and put those in. Now the good thing about doing it this way is he kind of hides the transition, and it's very attractive. You can see he really put a lot of time into the colors. However, the downside is you can't sand it. If you do, you're going to scrape off that color. You remember that BYU cat one that had faded? It's because he sanded it. So be careful. This is a great example of what you can do, but be careful if you do it that way. So those are the two methods that I found work best for longboards in our class, just to make sure that they fit into the laser engraver. Now, once you get your top and bottom done, now you can do either a top or a bottom or both, and that's up to you. Uh, once you get those taped together, we're going to veneer tape them, and I'll explain that in later demonstrations. We put them together with a couple layers of wood, the Baltic birch that I mentioned at the very beginning, and we glue those together, and it's going to look like this. So this student, he just pulled it out of the mold. You can see the veneer tape, how we tape all those images together. There's a transition here and here. There's your 24 inches. And he just pieced in the rest of it as he went. But this tape has to be scrubbed. The uh, shape of the board has to be cut out in the bandsaw and sanded. But as you can see, the mold puts a curve. It curves this way, and it curves up this way. It's difficult to see on the picture. But it curves in two different uh, directions so that it's more responsive as you're writing. But remember that the bulk of your work is going to be the design. Make sure that you take your time on designing it because it, that will determine how good it looks in the future for your one-of-a-kind board. So best of luck for your designs.